All right, you got the sewing machine, but now you're left wondering, what supplies do I actually need to get started sewing? That's what this video is all about. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. I've got a lot of stuff in front of me and I want to share my top recommendations for sewing supplies for beginners. You already got the sewing machine and you're wondering what else do you really need? Also stay tuned to the end because I really also want to talk about the consumerism within the sewing industry and also some tips for saving money and not breaking your budget when you're trying to get into this hobby because it can be pretty expensive. Also, quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video, but I am linking below to some affiliate links and to some of the supplies that are available in the Sewing Report Etsy shop, but feel free to buy stuff wherever you want. You don't have to use these links, I'm just pointing you to a few products, but there are many options at different budgets for each of the items I'm going to be talking about. So I really want this video to be accessible to a wide number of people. And let me talk about the sewing machine I've been featuring here on the channel for about the past few years. It is the Brother CS7000i. I've done a lot of videos about the machine from taking out of the box, how to get started with it, basic stitches, and also showing how the, all the presser feet work. I feel like this is a pretty solid entry-level machine for most sewists, but I also don't think it's a catch-all where you can just tell someone, yeah, this machine is right for everyone because it may not be right for everyone. It really depends on what you're going to be sewing, whether it's quilting, clothing, home decor items like purses, or if you're really trying to get into more heavy-duty sewing, like leather or really heavy stuff. I would recommend a heavy duty machine if you're gonna be doing that. I've done a few videos in the past also on my sewing machine thoughts, so you're welcome to check out some of those. One of the reasons I liked the Brother CS7000i, it's a pretty simple machine, a little more budget friendly. Sewing machines can be super expensive. They can be like $30,000, I'm not kidding. I also really liked that this model came with the walking foot. I do a lot of quilting and also sewing with a lot of layers. I do think if your sewing machine does not come with a walking foot, that is something I would suggest looking into because I find it really helpful with most projects. In fact, for most of the videos, you'll notice I have the walking foot on my sewing machine about 95% of the time. That's how much I like the foot. I do have a separate video just about the walking foot if you're interested in that. If it comes with the walking foot, that's something you don't have to buy. So that's why I personally like this model. I've had to buy walking feet separately in the past. They can be kind of pricey, sometimes about 30 bucks. So that's an added cost if you're also getting the sewing machine. So just keep that in mind. Another thing every sewist needs is a seam ripper. And this one is just a real basic one by Clover. Most sewing machines, though I've noticed, do come with a seam ripper. If you're getting the machine, check to see if your machine has one. If it does, then great. That's one you already have and you can use that one. Seam rippers come in lots of different shapes, sizes, prices, but you're probably gonna be using this one because I don't know anyone who sews who doesn't have to occasionally rip out stitches. We do make mistakes. There is like a little bit of a blade in the seam ripper and over time that gets dull. So don't use the seam ripper forever. Occasionally you are going to have to replace it, but luckily these tend to be pretty cheap. Let's talk needles. This is actually something I would not recommend buying a lot of when you're just getting started. And the reason why is because you select your needle based on the project, the thread you're using, and the material. I've gotten a good collection of needles over time, but it's because I've done many different projects. So I would recommend, usually your sewing machine will also come with a pack like this. This one actually came with one of my sewing machines. It's universal needles and it has three different sizes. 70 over 10, 80 over 12, and 90 over 14. I do have another video about sewing basic tips, and I have a section about how the needles work with the thread, so I'm gonna link some of those videos uh, below in the first comment of this video. If you really like have no clue what you're doing, and you really want to see explanations about just what the needle sizes mean and what the thread weight means as well, because it can be a little bit confusing. But this one should be enough to get you started on a couple projects. I would then go from there and buy needles as you get into different projects. For instance, uh, if you're sewing very lightweight fabric, you tend to want to use a Microtex needle versus if you're sewing a pair of jeans, you obviously want a jeans needle. So you can buy the needles as you need them, but I personally wouldn't run out and get a ton of different needles if you haven't even started sewing yet. I would say 
don't really buy any to begin with. See what comes in with your sewing machine or if, say you're getting a used machine, maybe pick up one pack of universal needles in different sizes and then kind of experiment from there. But this is something I would not spend a lot of money on right at the start. On to scissors, there are two that I probably use the most. The first is fabric shears, like these are like tailors, dressmaking shears. These are by Ginger, they're eight inches. I really love the design and just the look of these scissors. They work beautifully. They're pretty comfortable in my hand and you can get these uh, a lot of different places. These are a little more expensive, and also keep in mind, you want a pair of scissors that you are only going to be using on fabric. Never use your fabric scissors to cut things like paper or cardboard or like plastic packaging, only for fabric because you don't want the blades to get ruined by the other materials. I also have other just general purpose scissors that I use for the other stuff, but your fabric scissors should only be fabric. There are many different brands that sell fabric scissors. There's Kai, there's uh, Eversewn, I got a pair they sent to me, really cute. It's got a really nice like green handle on it. So you have a lot of different options. You can also get these used. And again, at the end, I wanna talk more about saving money because there's a lot of ways that you don't have to spend a ton of money on this. The other pair I would recommend, I really like these uh, double curve bent scissors. They're kind of small. I use these all the time because you can get really close to whatever you're cutting. I use these for applique, thread snippers at the sewing machine. I use these with my embroidery stuff all the time. And this is actually a pair by Havel and I do have this in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. Five inch double curved scissors and I just find I use these quite frequently. Just I keep them literally buy the sewing machine. I have other sizes of scissors, but I find I use these two the most. Next up is pins. No matter what you're sewing, you're probably gonna need some pins. I really like these magic pins. I do stock these in the Sewing Report Etsy shop as well. I prefer the extra fine version. There's a few different types, but I like these because they don't leave holes in my fabric. I also really like the, the grip on them. They're pretty easy to hold and they're, they also come with this really nice plastic case. I've used these in quite a few videos so you can see them in action. I'm a fan. There are many other types of pins though and I've tried other brands. I mean, they all work pins. The other thing you can use is wonder clips or also known generically as craft clips. Those are like the little clippy things and you can use those for material that you don't want holes in like if you're doing faux leather, vinyl, or other materials that you really don't want to leave holes in the material. Your sewing machine should come with some extra bobbins. What are bobbins? Bobbins are the bottom thread. So with your sewing machine you have an upper thread or a top thread and then the bottom thread is the bobbin thread. And you have your spool of thread up top and then you load the bobbin into the bobbin case. It's usually either uh, like on the bed of the sewing machine or it might be like in the front or even on the side. So there are a few different types of uh, bobbin loaders. Typically a machine might come with like five bobbins and they look like this, but you're probably gonna need more than that because you will typically match your bobbin thread to your top thread. If you only have like five bobbins, you either are gonna use those five colors of thread that you have loaded onto the bobbin, or you need to wait until that bobbin runs out to load another color. So immediately I always pick up a few extra bags or packs of the bobbins that you need for your machine and different brands have different bobbins. So they're not all the same. For instance, the brother, their model number is SA156. This should be located in your manual. You should be able to find out what the product number is for your bobbins. Uh, pick up some extra because you're probably gonna need them so that you can use different colors of thread with whatever you're sewing. And that's something that most people who sew like to have some extra of. Another tool you should familiarize yourself with is the rotary cutter. This is such a great thing to have in your sewing room. I was pretty new to it when I started sewing. I've seen the kind for scrapbooking and paper, but I didn't realize how heavily utilized these are in the sewing world, sewing and quilting. I've tried a lot of different brands. My favorite is actually the Ginger. Unfortunately, this is I, this seems to be discontinued, but I'm really sad about that because it is a truly great product, good quality, the blades, work really well. I do have a pretty good stash of blades. 
I don't know what I'm going to do when I run out because I don't think they sell these anymore. So I'm going to have to figure something else out. I also have this one. This was sent to me by Eversown and it is really cute. It's pretty lightweight and I really like the handle design on it. And I love the colors of the Eversown line. I think they're super cute. So there's so many different options for rotary cutters. So you need to factor in the rotary cutter itself and then replacement blades. Usually you can get them in packs. Also, I noticed on Amazon, a lot of off-brand sellers have much lower prices and you can get them in packs of like 10 or something like that. So a rotary cutter is great to have along with what I'm filming this on, which is a self-healing cutting mat. This is probably one of the most important tools in the sewing room because you use it so often. Cutting fabric is a big part of sewing. And if you don't have a rotary cutter and a self-healing cutting mat, it's gonna be a, a little more challenging because you're gonna have to use scissors. And then also I find these tools allow you to get more precise cuts, especially with quilting. You really need your cuts to be right on the money, which brings me to my next tool, which is the quilting rollers. This is my absolute favorite. This is an eight and a half inch by 24 inch ruler. It's by Creative Grids. Creative Grids is my top pick for rulers. I love the uh, product lines. They have these little grippy dots on the underside. Good quality. I like that they're clear and they've got really nice and easy to see markings on them. I have quite a few of these rollers. One caveat though, do not purchase these on Amazon. Creative Grids has said that there's a very big counterfeiting problem with Amazon sellers and they do not permit anyone who sells Creative Grids rulers to be selling on Amazon. So if you're going to pick one of these up, get it from an authorized reseller. I believe you can find this on their, the company website, but unfortunately they are dealing with a lot of counterfeiters. Not good. And also just know the company does not approve anyone selling these on Amazon. So you can usually get these at your local quilt shop. Also, I think Fat Quarter Shop sells these. I actually can't sell them because I was not a proved to sell these. They, again, they're really having a difficult time with the counterfeiting issue. I believe the company is being pretty picky on who is able to sell their products, which I completely understand, but this is definitely my personal favorite brand of quilting rollers. And even if you don't quilt, I think these are really great if you're doing any sort of straight cutting. Uh, and as far as the size of the cutting mat, I would get the biggest cutting mat size you can afford. Make sure it's the self-healing kind. There are, again, lots of options for these. This one, I forgot what the brand is. I just got a new one. I was using a delay mat for quite a while. Over time, like it kind of, you know, got a little funky, so I decided to replace it. Plus I wanted a fun color. So I got this pink one. Look at the reviews on them, especially if you're buying on Amazon though, because some of the self-healing cutting mats, I, uh, people have reported that there's inaccurate markings and that's a big deal if you're buying a cutting mat because if the markings are off, then your measurements are going to be off. I would say if you can get a 36 by 24 inch one, that should be enough to get you started because it'll allow you to cut fabric that's folded in half, which is typically how quilting cotton comes. My favorite size though is the 36 by 48, large enough that I can really like spread out my fabric and I feel like it gives me a little more freedom with the cutting. So this is definitely something if you can pick up, it will save you a lot of time if you have some quilting rollers, rotary cutters, and a self-healing cutting mat. Again, get the largest size you can. You might have to work on your dining room table or your kitchen table or like I have this craft table. Make sure you have some room to spread out. I know that can be tough with people who might be in apartments or very small spaces or if you've got roommates, but it does make things a little bit easier. You could also do it on the floor, although I guess that would make it kind of hard to cut, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, thread. This is another one that I would say don't run out and buy tons of it to begin with. Again, because each project you do might have different types of thread you need. There are different weights, there's different materials, there's rayon, polyester, cotton thread. And I think if you're not really sure what you need, maybe you get a couple spools in some like common colors, like white, black, gray. This is a fun multicolor pack by Cotton and Steel for Sulky. Super cute, I believe this is cotton. And again, there's many different weights of thread. 
and you kind of need to tailor the thread to your project, but I would buy your thread as needed per project so that you actually get what you need and you don't end up buying a bunch of thread you never use or you get and you figure out, you know, I don't really need this. So don't buy a ton of thread to start. If you are looking just to get a starter pack, um, many of these companies do sell packs like this. Arafil is a good thread for quilting. Also, I bought stuff from uh, Mattler. That's another good brand. Selkie. There's a lot of different brands. I would maybe avoid super cheap thread though, because the thread you use in your sewing machine can make a big difference. And I've noticed some cheaper threads tend to give me some problems. I think the thread quality does matter. Again, I know it's a little bit hard when you're on a budget, but look for sales, look for maybe people who are, uh, you know, selling off some of their stuff. So there are some ways to get some good thread. I do think the thread quality matters in my opinion. This is more in like the fabric care area, but lint roller. This is something you're gonna use a lot because there's always gonna be stray threads and you need to get fuzz off of your fabrics. These are super cheap. I got, I usually get mine at the dollar store or something and just have a few of these in your sewing room because you're gonna use this a lot. The other thing you're gonna need, and this is something people don't really think about when they're getting into sewing, is you're gonna be spending a lot of time ironing and pressing. And iron is something you're gonna be using a lot you don't really have to get a really pricey one. This one was like $12.99 at my local Aldi store. They're like store brand, easy home. It does have steam on it and it works, it works fine. I would say don't feel like you need to get a $200 iron. It's gonna get junk on it from like stabilizer or whatever, you know, stuff. I have a few different irons. I also have some like little, little mini irons. I'm really glad that I got one that's pretty inexpensive because I don't really care if it gets like gunked up. I do also have um, iron cleaner that I use and it, it usually does a pretty good job cleaning off the iron, but just you just need like a basic steam iron. You can get them at any store. Just a pro tip, you don't always have to use the steam function. For a lot of things, I will just spritz the fabric with like this cheapo spray bottle with water and then iron whatever it is I am. Almost like it was steamed, but you're just using the spray bottle instead. So that's something I do a lot instead of just constantly using that steam bud. And then I don't have to worry as much about keeping this little chamber refilled with water. So it saves me a little bit of time. Plus I find it kind of makes things a little more simple. This one's a little more optional, but I find I use a disappearing ink pen or it's usually called an air soluble or water soluble pen. Use these all the time. I love them. My favorite brand is the Clover brand and I've tried, I really like the purple one and this little pink capped one. I actually do stock these in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. This is one of my favorite things. I love that I can make, I, I and you're gonna make markings, like per, most sewing projects are gonna need to make some sort of markings on your fabric, but I like that this comes out so you don't have to worry about permanent marks in your fabric. So this is one I would recommend. I also have one that's uh, white for darker fabrics and there's been, there are many different brands. So try them out, see what you like. Definitely something I didn't really know existed when I got into sewing, but this is something I use constantly and they're really great. They do last for, for quite a while. Usually one of these will last me about maybe like five or six months and then I just switch to a new one. And this one also has a little eraser on it, but usually with the air soluble, the mark will just naturally fade away with water soluble. Again, you can like spritz it with water, it'll go away. You can wash the item, it'll go away. It's nice because you do, again, there are many projects that you're gonna need to make marks for like sewing or if you're making clothes for like marking your darts, stuff like that. So this is something, if you're very new, this is probably something you're gonna wanna get at some point. These items I would say are pretty optional. I would recommend these more if you definitely plan to sew clothing. And this is a tailor's ham and this is a sleeve roll or a seam roll. It's known by both terms. I just got these online somewhere and you will use these for pressing. So the sleeve roll or the seam roll, it's pretty obvious. It's for when you're pressing out sleeves or anything that's like a tube shape. You can put this into it and then press it. It's a little hard to press a tube shaped item on a flat surface. So this is a good thing to have. Uh, and the pressing ham, the tailor's ham, is for pressing curves. So if you are only going to be sewing 2D items or very flat items, I would say you really don't need these two tools. If you're gonna be sewing clothing, this is something that is very commonly used. You can also DIY these. I've seen some tutorials to make them. 
I just decided to, to buy them. This is great for pressing out, again, curved items, things like darts and uh, other things. Um, I also use these quite often when I'm sewing bags or other little items that have a shape to them. So this helps keep the shape. And if you don't really know what you're gonna be sewing, I wouldn't buy these until you really know that you're gonna need them. This may surprise you, but I would also tell you not to run out and buy a bunch of fabric when you first get a sewing machine. Here is why. When you're very new, you don't exactly know what you wanna sew, and you don't know what your needs are. You don't know what projects you're going to be doing. I've bought a lot of fabric that I've never used. Some of my fabric is seven years old. Still sitting there, haven't used it. And it's a shame. So you really don't want to start hoarding fabric and getting this huge collection of stuff you never use. So if you are just getting into it, here's my recommendation. Sew on scrap fabric. And by scrap fabric, I mean like things like old clothes, old towels, bedding, sheets. Practice because you're gonna make a lot of mistakes and you are gonna have some frustrating time when you're sewing and your very first projects probably aren't gonna turn out the way you want them to. So you don't really want to be sewing on fabric that you spent a, an arm and a leg on, like Liberty of London stuff. You're doing your first project, I would not recommend using fabric that costs $30 a yard. Once you feel a little more comfortable and your results are coming out in a way that you are satisfied with, then that's when you start sewing with the good stuff. But to start off with, get stuff you got around the house, old textiles, go to the thrift store, clothing you wanna try to upcycle, experiment. The experimentation should be done on fabric you really don't give a crap about. So if it gets ruined, you're not gonna start to cry because that's happened to me when I've used good fabric, I messed up and you're just like, oh, what did I just do? So you don't really want to do that. So that's why I would tell you if you're just getting your sewing machine, practice on stuff you really don't care about. And then start to collect stuff like the pretty fabric. And, and it can be hard, I know, because part of the reason you get into sewing is for all of the pretty new fabric that you see everybody on Instagram using. But the reality is that when you're very new to it and you don't really know what you're doing, you really wanna just, just practice and get better at the craft. I, this is not something I would recommend, just running out and getting like a bunch of nice, pretty fabric at the store. If you are gonna buy new fabric though, I do know a lot of fabric stores like Joann's have that remnant section. When I, I think when I was first starting out, we did go to Joann's and we just got like some really inexpensive remnant fabric. Some of it was really cute, some of it was not so cute but it was really cheap and it was good to practice on. But you don't even need to spend money on practice fabric. That's what I'm telling you. Just use stuff, stuff you have. Another thing I would recommend is if you know people who sew, friends or family members, I would actually hit them up if you need any of these supplies because chances are they have stuff they never use. They've got duplicates. And most of the people I know who sew would be very happy to offload some of their stuff they're not using on people who are excited about sewing. In fact, I would, but like hardly anyone hits me up on it that I know in real life. But I have given away a lot of supplies to people who are like, yeah, I like sewing. And I'm like, hey, here, I've got eight pairs of scissors. Here's a couple of them. So if you know people who sew, they might be a good resource, you know, or even if they maybe want to sell you some of their fabric to de-stash or supplies to de-stash, then you're helping each other out. You can also check out garage sales, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. Just be careful, guys, with the safety stuff. Don't meet a stranger. Meet at a safe place, public. Don't give them a lot of personal information, that sort of thing, because I don't. you don't want to be a crime victim. Uh, but there's a lot of ways that I think you can collect supplies that doesn't have to cost a lot of money. And that brings me to my little, I guess, monologue slash rant, because I know there is a lot of consumerism in this industry, especially when you get into like the influencer sphere and you're looking at everyone on Instagram and with all the blogs, they've got such pretty stuff. They've got an amazing sewing room. They've got expensive stuff and they have all the latest gadgets. And that is something I that seems to be coming more and more prevalent in this whole space is everyone is just marketing, like it's like 24 seven marketing all the time. And it can be a little bit annoying. Who has the money to spend on all of this stuff? Like all, you don't need every single tool for quilting or every single little gadget for sewing. So sometimes it's good to use what you have. And if you are on a budget, you should never feel pressured to spend more than you can afford on sewing stuff. 
So I know it can be a little bit hard and that's something that I've, I've really tried to be proactive to not excessively promote and that's why I'm telling you this. You don't always have to buy stuff new and you don't always have to buy things, period. In fact, everything I'm showing you in this video, I would say don't run out and get it all at one time. Add to your collection little by little as you can afford stuff. The longer you, so you're gonna have a collection of stuff. You're gonna have a, like again, most of the people I know who've been sewing for a while, they just have massive amounts of supplies. It can actually get overwhelming because you know you're never gonna use all of this stuff and you're wondering what, what to do with it all. And, and I think about this sometimes and I know I have a lot of stuff and part of it's because I've been sewing for several years and the other part is I do have a YouTube channel about sewing so obviously I'm gonna have a lot of supplies. I don't really like this whole push that everyone needs to buy everything. Let's be real, there's way too much fabric selections. I just can't keep up with it all. And I normally don't sew with new, like the new releases. I usually end up sewing with fabric I've had for five years and it's totally out of print. I think it's cool if you do, if you like the latest fabric, I think that's awesome. It's just, it can be a little bit hard to keep up with. And I don't feel like we should have to have that attitude that you need to always keep up with other people. And that's why I also wanna say, again, if you can get the stuff for free, you know, cheap, used, do that. Don't always, you don't always have to buy stuff new. In fact, I often have, sometimes like if you buy certain supplies, you know, it comes in a, it only comes in a 50 pack and you only need two. And maybe there are some like sharing we can do like, hey, I've got 50 of these and I only need four. So do you want the other 46, that kind of thing. Maybe there's some, you know, swapping you can do with friends or people you know because I just think just the amount of consumerism I'm seeing in this space is, a, is, is like a little bit much. And I know it can be a little bit hard for me to balance because I, I feature products on this channel, but I also don't want to promote people to buy things they can't afford. I don't want to promote everyone always feeling like they need to buy stuff because you don't always need to buy stuff. So that's why I want to try to share with you tips on how you can save money sewing. Again, pick things up, use. But the first thing I would really do though is hit up people you know who sew because there's probably a very good chance they would be more than happy to gift you some of their extra supplies. And then they can kind of empty out some of the clutter in their sewing room and then you get stuff for free. So just saying, that's something I would probably do if I'm trying to get into it. And also you don't have to buy your sewing machine new. You can, I've seen so many sewing machines on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Craigslist, so if you're looking for a sewing machine, there's probably a lot of people who bought a sewing machine in the pandemic and never used it. So just saying, there's probably some opportunities out there to get things from, from other people who are just not using them. And then they can clean out their garage and then you get a sewing machine uh, for a pretty low price. So I hope you enjoyed this video and down below in the comments, let me know if you feel like I've missed anything or if there's any supplies that you feel would be good for new sewists that I didn't mention. Obviously this list is not all inclusive but I tried to be as complete as I can and also as realistic as I can. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. You're welcome to subscribe for more sewing and crafts videos. Also, you can hit the bell if you wanna be notified about new videos and live streams and stuff like that. I hope you all are having a happy holidays and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.